has been a rough week for Aliens fans. After years of delays and disappointments, Aliens Colonial Marines was finally released. It's been about a week since then, and it has been torn to shreds by reviewers worldwide. As if that wasn't enough, there's been controversy regarding Gearbox, the developer, and their responsibilities regarding the issues with the game's development. There have been whispers about key sections of the game being outsourced to lesser developers, and demos that were rigged with features that would clearly not make the final version. It's easy to find these discussions around the internet, and they are certainly valid topics to look into. However, I think people are forgetting about those most hurt by this release. Stalwart fans of the Aliens franchise who have been waiting patiently for years for this game's release, and have been let down. These players had prepared themselves for an Aliens game, so today's episode is just for them. We're going to have a look at some of the other games in the Aliens franchise, over various consoles, and see if we can't help them scratch that itch. Before we start, there are two games in particular that should be played by everyone, whether they're a fan of the franchise or not. The first is the Aliens vs Predator arcade game by Capcom. The other is the Aliens vs Predator 2 PC game by Monolith. Both are fantastic games, but are so well known in the gaming community that I think it would be beneficial to spend this episode looking at some of the lesser known titles in the franchise. The first is Alien 3. Although the movie faced its fair share of criticism, it was still a lucrative license, and as a result, games based on the movie were released for most of the major consoles of the era. There were versions of the game for the NES, Mega Drive, Amiga, and more, all made by different developers. The most well-rounded version was the Super Nintendo release, developed by Probe Entertainment and released in 1993. An interesting note is that this version was published by LJN and stands as one of the few good titles to be associated with that infamous company. To be honest, there's not a whole lot in common between the game and the film it supposedly represents. The film was about Ripley and a handful of untrained prisoners trying to survive against a single alien with limited resources and weaponry. The game is about Ripley running around armed to the teeth and killing aliens by the dozens. Really, the game resembles Aliens far more than Alien 3. This turned out to be a good gameplay decision though, as the varied weapon selection and relentless action are a solid foundation for this game to build upon. Whilst the underlying gameplay is similar to many other SNES games, it's the polish and atmosphere that elevates the title and makes it so memorable. Each level contains a variety of missions that can be accessed through terminals, and completed in any order. Little features such as transparent fog drifting in the foreground of a stage, or the screeching of an alien as it charges at Ripley, makes it feel like you're playing a game set in the Aliens universe, rather than a cookie cutter action game. Whilst I wouldn't put the game on quite as high a pedestal, Alien 3 reminds me a bit of Super Metroid in many ways clever graphical tricks and ambient sounds helping to stoke the player's imagination and bring some movie magic into the game. Alien 3 isn't on the virtual console, but it can be found on eBay for pretty cheap, so it's worth looking into if you're craving some classic SNES action. During the next generation of consoles, there were a couple of Alien games released. Many people have fond memories of the earlier title, Alien Trilogy as it was released quite early in the lifespan of the 32-bit consoles and featured locations from the first three films. Keep them as memories only. The passage of time has not done this game any favours. A far more impressive title was released years later and, sadly, was overlooked by many thanks to the poor reception of its film counterpart. Alien Resurrection was a first-person shooter that featured multiple playable characters, great level design, and an engine that pushed the aging PlayStation console to its limits. Whilst Alien Trilogy feels similar to Doom, Alien Resurrection feels much closer to Quake 2 in terms of the underlying technology used and the immersiveness of the environments. One aspect of the game I found particularly impressive for the time were the lighting effects, with dark hallways and flickering lights helping to create the atmosphere that is synonymous with the franchise. Like most first-person shooters of this older generation, 
The game feels quite dated mechanically, but for anyone who's interested in atmosphere and attention to detail, this game is well worth seeking out. Finally, we'll look at a game that did not receive anywhere near the attention it deserved. Aliens Infestation on the Nintendo DS. This one was developed by WayForward, who are masters of 2D sprite art and side-scrolling games, as demonstrated by the glorious Contra 4. The game functions like Metroid, with parts of the game world gradually being unlocked as you explore and discover new items. One interesting aspect of the game is the way death is handled. You begin with a squad of four marines, each with unique personalities. You can swap playable characters at save rooms, but they are lost if you die as them during the game. As you progress through the game, you meet different soldiers, which can be added to your party if you have space. This permadeath scenario accomplishes two things. It adds to the atmosphere of dread as you lose unique characters to the xenomorphs, and it provides a clever in-universe explanation for the gamey concept of extra lives. In many ways, the gameplay is like an evolved version of Alien 3 from the SNES, except with a stronger survival horror atmosphere and layered narrative. It's not the longest game, and like many WayForward games, it's not the easiest to find, but I think it's the best game in the franchise, and the model for how future titles should be treated. There is still hope for the franchise in the gaming world, even if the latest title was a stinker. There are proven ways to build an engaging Aliens game, which is not surprising given how many other titles drew inspiration from the movies in the first place. I think whichever developer gets it right is sitting on a gold mine, especially given that Prometheus has brought the Aliens franchise back into the cultural limelight. Colonial Marines, mm, it had promise. As we've seen, they can do much, much better.